On now because you won that tournament and you said you come back to Spurs with a big like your chest out for example right yeah. problem is the season later you start with a 12 point deduction a big big fine out yeah. um apparently out the FA Cup and again it's just, it's a crazy season because you have Clinton coming in the two yeah. Romanians coming in what was yeah. that season like 94 I know it's a memorable one in Spurs um, yeah. sort of folklore but what, what was that like from yeah, start to end of all that you know, I've, 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 I've done bits for a book about it and stuff like that you know a fella wrote a book about that season and uh, it, it just you know that summer you were away and you're like you, you, you got punished with, with everything 12 points you've gone down you're out of the FA Cup and then you think how bad can it get and then all of a sudden like the, the, the signings come in and um you know, we had a really, we had a really good pre-season, really good pre-season, and um, I thought, I thought we, we, we've got a chance. But obviously, you had that twelve point deduction. Then that got taken, that got taken, or what? That got, we, we, we got that back. We're back in the cup again. Signings are great. Uh, we go to Sheffield Wednesday, first game of the season. Um, just an unbelievable game, that. It's some great game. football. Some yeah, great football we, yeah, game. great goals. Yeah. Uh, Jürgen was was on fire. Um, he obviously scored the header, got the dive in. <laughs> uh, but you can see that the throw is starting then. You know, we we, we, were, we were good. Um, but you could see the defensive throw is were, were there because, you know, we can't keep scoring three goals and conceding two goals. So... That's where it got a little, you know, we could see that something might have to change, but he didn't. He stuck by his beliefs. Um, so we we went we went for that, and then we so we, we we had ever ever at home. Um, we had to, you know, I've set Jurgen up with us with with his with his bicycle kick, two one win ever, and you think, yeah, this is great. And then we actually got three wins on the bounce, I, I believe. So if we had the 12 points, they were virtually coming off anyway. So, but we started like a house on fire. We were really, the crowd were up for it. And um, yeah, it was, as I said before, it sort of it, it deflated, uh, you know, later on in that season. And uh, obviously we got to the, um, we got to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. So, and uh, went to Anfield. Unbelievable, unbelievable win now. Uh, Teddy bends one in. Yeah, Jürgen gets, yeah, Jurgen gets gets one as well. So c- come away from there, and then we got Everton in the semis. That, that was just another strange day for, for myself because um, left backs were going down like lead balloons, and it was like uh, Justin Edelman went down because um, Jerry Francis always liked to train in the morning of the game. So this morning come, again, we weren't the biggest of squads. We're probably carrying 17, 18 players. Um, Justin Edelman went down to you. Oh, I thought next one, Sol Campbell. Sol Campbell went down in training. No. Twisted his ankle. So we're looking around, but there's me. I'm the next one in. So, so I went, oh, I'm, you know, I haven't played left back since I was wherever, wherever, you know, two or three years ago. So no, Jerry used to like playing me in centre midfield. But what a game to put you in in that position though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it was just, it was just, it was mad. And, um, you know, it, it, it didn't fall for me that day. It, it, it was a, it was a tough day. And his limp was out on the right hand side. Oh, you played, and, I was watching yeah, the game, yeah, that game. Yeah. You played well. Yeah. Played and well. he, he uh, yeah, he gave me a bit of a rough time. So, um, but there was a chance. We were two one down. And there was a chance to come across. I still believe it now. It's, it, it's in my in my head. I've seen it a few times. So it's come across. It's got flicked on, and I'm in the I'm in the box here. So I'm Neville Southall's in goal, and I've hit this left foot shot. Sweet. I've never hit a left foot shot so sweetly in my life. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm thinking that is going straight in that bottom corner. And all of a sudden, like Neville Southall gets a fingertip. He gets a fingertip, hits the post. They get on the break, and that's three one. I'm a catchy. Uh, game done. Yeah, you have a catch. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. 
Oh, so yeah. free run down. I come off. They 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 took me off. Which you know they went they went gun ho. And then we can see the number one four one, and it was just it was just one of them days. It was just not a nice nice day at all, and um, it was tough. You know, I felt for support, but it was weird because we played at Ellen Road, and Ellen Road has got like where the dugouts are. It wasn't a big stand; it was a bit wooden. Opposite was a opposite the the, of the dugouts was a high stand, really high. And then you got your ends and your ends. Well, Spurs never had an end. So you yeah. had Everton at one end, yeah, you had Everton and the fans at one end, uh, Everton fans at that end, and Spurs fans just had one stand. And it was, it was, the atmosphere was really not favouring us, you know, because they were at the, at the, at the, the at the two ends. And um, we all, we sat down and we went home on the bus. He said, it just, just didn't feel right. It just didn't feel like we had, a decent crowd there, you know, and and, uh, and we did, and that's that's a big. I I say to boys every, every time we, we we go into an FA Cup and th- and stuff like that, I always say to the boys, you know, have no regrets because this is some competition, and you, I, I do regret that that you know I never sort of we never won that game, but uh, it, it was it was a it was a tough day. That, that was a tough, it was really tough, and we didn't really sort of recover after that and players started to leave and um, yeah it, it, it was tough it was tough yeah again, again it, it's it's nice to have you be honest about it honestly it's like to to reflect on the game but to be as mature as about you are about it some guys don't want to talk about it but the no, fact you no, are, I appreciate it yeah it's one of the games it was just it was it was not to be you know the yeah. morning started terribly we're losing two players and then you, you, you're putting a makeshift left back in there. And it, it just wasn't. And, and I think they sort of targeted that. And, yeah. um, but, you know, I, I, we, we, just didn't, we just didn't get going. And they were, they were, they were called the dogs of war, that Everton side. And they, they really done a, they done a job on us, to be fair. Really done a job yeah. on us. If it's any consolation, they did beat my night in the finals. So at least, you know, it wasn't yeah, just that was a good thing. That was a good <laughs> thing, to be fair. Yeah, that was a good thing, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I think to sum up your time at um, Tottenham, just before we go into your time at Millwall and then sort of wrap up the pod after that, right? So your time at um, Tottenham, I have to ask um, just one question. Who was the best player you played with, with at Tottenham? And who was your favourite player you played with at Tottenham? If that makes any sense. There could be one player, there could be two, I don't know. Just curious. Yeah, I think, I think favourite has to be um, Jürgen. I think he's just a class act. To the moment he... Um, he walked through the door. He, he was just a class act. Uh, Favourite, um, Teddy, really enjoyed playing with Teddy. Darren Anderson, mate of mine, still mate of mine. Um, Nicky, uh, Nicky Barnby was was a great, great, you know, good player as well. But, you know, they, they were all just all good good lads. You know, I can't, I can't pick one out, but Jürgen was probably the standout player, you know, for, for what he'd done and... and, and you know, he really did put us back on the map, really. And, uh, you know, Teddy as well made his career better going to United. And uh, no, really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to be around. I had the opportunity to play with top, top players. So that was, that was really what it was all about, really. I feel like that's the answer you give when you know that you're still tight with the people in the squad and you don't want to pick one yeah. in case you have to hear about it. No, no, we later. are, yeah. We're on the WhatsApp group. <laughs> we're still on the WhatsApp group. And it's just really, you know, it's Yeah, I don't want to upset too many people. That's hilarious. Oh, but yeah. going to the next club now, you've gone on to Millwall. So that's a club that I'm sure you have very fond memories of. But I know that, again, you've left Tottenham and going to the Premier League and then going to Millwall, who were then in Division 2, which is now League 1 or... Uh, again, two and one. You get we all get the point. Uh, if you yeah. guys you don't understand it, look yeah. it up. But anyway, you go there in uh, ninety eight, right? So I wanted to ask, what was the was it? Did it feel like a culture shock to go there and to drop a few levels? Or did it feel like you're going to go there and you knew you're going to play from the start? So that's what you really wanted to do. Yeah, I think it probably was. I think I probably looked at my career and I probably had a, probably hadn't hit. You know, what was I on 60, 70 games and stuff like that? You know, obviously, we made some stuff. I was probably hitting 100 games and stuff like that. 
So I just wanted to go and play. Um, based in London as well, it probably um, helped the calls. You know, I could have gone to a couple of clubs, could have gone to Stoke City, could have gone to Cardiff, but decided to stay in, in London. I think it was, a, it was a big pull for me to stay in London. Um, so, but it, it was a, it was, it was a tough call because it was, the club was really going through sticky times. Um, that they had an ex West Ham player as manager yeah. Billy Bonds, so that that was always going to go wasn't going to go down very well. So yeah. started off with a loan there, um, got injured at Fulham, dislocated my shoulder at Fulham. Oh wow! And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I thought that's it. <laughs> Where do I go? I've left Spurs, gone to Millwall alone. What do I do? But fair play to them, they saw what I was, I was what I was about. So done all the summer. Um, getting my shoulder back together and um, yeah so they give me a two year deal um, yeah I just thoroughly thoroughly thought to myself that this could be a club for me you either get you feel uh, a fit to a club and I think that club was probably the fit that I had you know and um, similar situation with myself at Spurs um Young players coming through, um, really talented players coming through, and um, really, and that's what really won it for me, really, um, because um, at the time, uh, Billy Bonds brought his own players in. The old, uh, Andy Gray was there, Paul Allen was there. You know, it was an aging squad, and I think um, it needed to be shifted. So Billy went. They brought two Millwall guys in, and. Uh, yeah, so it, I was made captain pretty early in the, in the process. And, uh, yeah, just thoroughly enjoyed my time there. I've I made a lot of friends there. Um, I, th I think my time there was successful. I believe my time there was successful. Yeah. And, and my name's held up there reasonably high, which, which is what you try and start out in the game as. You want to you put... A marker on somewhere, and I and I feel I did at that club. I think I've, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm I'm really, really well liked there. And uh, to captain a side and to win stuff, and to get to finals of, of stuff is it, what it's all about. And um, as I said, the club was going through a terrible time when I first joined. It went from five thousand crowds in a new stadium of twenty thousand. To seeing it at 20,000 was, was something like I said in one of my first interviews. I've got to see this place full house. And I was lucky enough to do that a, a few times. So, yeah, really, really brilliant. It's, 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 it's a tough place to play. So, you know, they're, they're not, they're not, they're, they don't let you get away with much. But I think they, they saw what I was about. I was a bit more than a premiership centre back. I was more of a tough tackling, good in the air, leader type. Guy, and I think they were crying out for that at that present time to, to bring these young boys through. I was gonna say like a Tony Allen's, but I think that's not the comparison I make with ex first no, player. You might as well say like a Gary Mabbitt. Yeah, there's yeah, like, plenty there, but it, it just <laughs> needed that. And uh, Sean Dice come with you know, a couple of seasons down the line, Sean Dice come in, and me, me and him just took the reins and sort of just nurtured these young boys the way that. Gary Mabber had done to me and, and how Sean had been brought up in his, in his time. He was, he was at Nottingham Forest as a youth player. So he had the Stuart Pierces and, and the Des Walkers, you know what I mean? And, and we were all lucky. And he was, he was saying himself, great set of pros, great set of pros either. And we were only doing what we'd done. De definitely. I think one question I do have to ask, Don, you mentioned it earlier. You got made captain uh, quite early on, I think, when Rhino came in. So Keith yeah, Stevens yeah. and Alan McCleary, right? Yeah. Was that the moment that you kind of felt that that was your team? Because I know you come in and you probably made you captain, what, 23, 24? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe at that sort of age sort of range, right? So if you've made me captain at that age, and for example, you come into the team in 98, you've dislocated your shoulder, so you've had a bit of a an easy start. Is that the moment yeah, yeah. that it sort of makes, allows you to sort of take on its sort of own way? It becomes your club and your responsibility. Like basically, did you thrive in it? Did it help you to really finally feel settled and sort of go from yeah, strength I, to strength? I think so. Yeah, we was, we was, um, 
centre arse were going at the time, and we, we had uh, we had a couple of young lads coming through. Joe Dolan was one. Um, he was a good centre back, and I sort of in, 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 they saw a big future with him. He suffered with a lot of injuries towards the end, but uh, yeah, I, 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 t- I took it on. To be fair. Um, I'd always, I'd always captain teams and, and, and things like that. I always, I've, I've always been very vocal as a, as a player. Um, and I think that's helped me even when I was 17, 18, I used to always mouth off to, to older pros and stuff like that. But, you know, that, that was part of the game. So, um, yeah, so I, he, he, they, they offered me the captaincy very early. And uh, we was a young side, you know, as I said, Cahill, Reedy. Uh, I for Richard Richard Sagner, and uh, it was just nice to sort of nurture them and, and and you know to to try and give give something back really and um, and, I, and I think with my leadership you know I, I, tr- I tried to do it by the way that I, I play so I was all all guns blazing you know head volley block the ball and, and stuff like that and it, it just the fit was just really good, and I think I think them young lads, you know, that, that come through and then went on to to play the Premiership themselves. It was it was just really, you know, really pleased for them boys. You know, they, you know, Tim Cahill went to Everton for two million pounds. You won't get you won't get nothing for two million pounds these days. Absolutely nothing. So, yeah. um, I, I think I'm curious about Tim Cahill because he, I think he came to the club around the same time you did in '98, for example, and yeah. I messed. I can imagine you saw him from what he started from to where he ended up being. Like, did, did you think he'd reached the height that he did? And what did, were your first thought? Like, what were your first thoughts for him where you came? Like, what is it about him where he came that you sort of thought that, you know what, good or bad that you noticed? And then what did you notice over the years that got him to where he was? Yeah, we got, we've got to remember when, when we was playing, we were, a lot of teams were playing 4 4 2. So, so you had, it was very rigid. You had two quick wingers. We had Reedy and Eiffel uh, up front. Uh, we had Harris and a big man or Claridge and a big man. And, and, and so it was very, 4-4-2 was playing against 4-4-2 every week. So you'd have a defensive midfield player or you'd have a box-to-box player. So Tim Cale was your box-to-box player. But he would score... He, he might not do nothing in a game, but come the 80th minute, he'll just pop up in a box and score a goal. And another thing he was good at as well, we was a big side, so I used to get picked up by a big, and Daichi used to get picked up by a big, and, and now, so Tim Kay was probably about five foot eight, five foot nine, but he jumped like six foot five. Yeah. So what he was doing, he we were, we were taking people away, and Tim Kay was getting marked by a five foot, six or seven guy, but he was just scoring goals. He was just jumping up above them, scoring goals. So that was our set piece every week. Clubs didn't get it. Clubs are thinking, how does he keep scoring every week? And that's all we've done. And I use it now. I use this, that corner every week when, when, when we play Coggershaw. I say, right, we're a big side, so big, 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 big. Take him onto the goalkeeper, but leave someone out rest. And we, we score goals all the time by it. But yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's yeah. funny you say that because I was watching the Villa game against Le- uh, Leicester the other day. I think they did it. They got all the big men to the back stick yeah, because yeah. all the big Leicester big men were in the middle. So it was basically the back six unguarded. And even though it was the console that got it, he was six foot. It's that concept of you if you create a decoy by taking a, like, I mean, putting players away from uh, the area of danger, it gives you more yeah. space to basically wreak yeah, havoc, yeah. I guess. And it's, it's nice to sort of hear you do that as yeah. well. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's something we've worked on. We've worked, we have, we, we, we have, we've really worked a bit hard this year for set pieces. Yeah. And uh, we, we've scored a few from it, to be fair. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think the one thing I have to go on to now, I think one of the last things I mentioned about Millwall just before we close the pod as well, right? Yeah. Uh, with Millwall, right, and I look at your highlights, for example, right, you have you did a lot as captain. That's the thing, right? You got Millwall to their, uh, you helped Millwall to their first ever professional appearance at Wembley in the 99 uh, Football League final against Wigan. Now, how did that feel to be captain in the side? Uh, wait, in fact, you nearly didn't make it to that game as well, so I'd rather you tell yeah, that yeah. story about yeah, I'm yeah, curious about yeah. that. Friday's come about, obviously with doing training, set pieces have come, up, come about, and uh, 
Yeah, so practicing the set pieces. Um, Mark Burcham, I have a flaming arm. And I, was, I, was, I, got, I cut quite easy, you know, being fair hair and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, got, got a cut on my eye. And I think myself, oh, one chance of playing Wembley and it might be taken away from me. So they stitched me up, as you do, like back in them days, they just stitched you up and then like, they padded me out. So leading the side out of Wembley, I've got a uh, padding thing out. Butcheresque. Like, yeah, butcheresque, as they say. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, like, it was, um, yeah, the, 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 the day was special. You went up Wembley Way and it was full of blue and white. We had 53,000 supporters there. We can add a little corner bit there. And it was quite a hot day. Um, and, you know, I'm sweating around and I'm, the headband's up, up now, not even covering my eye, it's covering the top of my head. <laughs> so I'm like, well, I've got to get this off. So I threw it on the floor. And the referee's gone, you might have to put that on. I said, I can't, I can't do it. He says, if you get any blood on your shirt, you're going to have to go off. So I've gone, right, just let me just play and then continue. So I got away with it right towards the end and they scored in a lot. It, it was a poor game, I've got to say, because it was one of the worst games I've probably played in, you know, at all. It was just a dead game. And yeah. then they sort of, um, they, um, yeah, they scored late on. And the, but the, 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 it was all about the supporters, really. They were back at Wembley, or that first time at Wembley, and just to see that crowd was 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 what it was all about, really. And, uh, and that, really pushed us on for the success that we sort of had in, 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 in every year that I was there. We had something, we had something to play for. We had won the title. We, had, we missed out on playoffs. Two playoffs we missed out on one of them, won a title. And, that, and that's what you want to do as, as, yeah. as a career. Yeah, one the year later, believe it or not, I know that Wigan's not a name that you say easy because a year later they beat you in the playoff playoffs. semis. I don't want to yeah. bring up old wounds, but they did that. Yeah. But, but I'm going to go on to a year later because um, Rhino and uh, McCleary unfortunately get sacked, but then you have Mark yeah. McGee that comes in, right? Yeah. What was it about that season that clicked to the point where you claimed the Division 2 title, so League 1, with a club record 93... Does that record still stand, the 93 no, points? Sorry, yeah, it might stand. I don't, I don't know. I've not looked into that one. So. But to, to get to that point and to... If that 20-year 20 20 year anniversary of it now, what was that team like to play in and what went so right that season? What did McGee bring in to sort of lead you to those sort of hypes? Yeah, well, we we, we got to a bit of a, a standstill with with Keith and, and um, Alan. Um, great guys, you know, I, 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 no qualms in there. It just got a little bit too much for them. And I think um, the pressure of us, I think the budget was quite high. So we needed to go up, to be fair. And um, we brought in some good players. But Mark was a very good man management. Man management. At the end of the day, we were, we were sitting in, I think we were sitting in sixth spot. And I think the game he come and watched, because Steve Grit and Ray Half had become joint managers. I think they were taking the reins over. So the first game Mark's come to was Oxford at home. We won 5 0. And then they made, they've named the, the manager Mark McGee, and we went, yeah, great. He knows this league. He knows how to get out of this league. Um, and his man management skills and excellent. One of the best I've been with. He was he was just a, another level, really, really good. Not a great coach, but he had the coaches there. But he was his, his team talks were there was no shouting, there was no none of this, none of that. But he, he was just honest and nice guy. And then we then um, results went for us. Then we got we need to cut the good results at home. And then we went to Cambridge, went to Cambridge and I scored the first there. And, um, and then we went on to win there 5-1 and that just set us up. We, we was done. We, we knew that we was up and then we had to go to Wrexham. So we went to Wrexham, uh, got a point at Wrexham. So we're promoted. So that's, that's done now. So as a manager at Mark was, he said, right, just have the week off. We, we, we're promoted, have the week off. Come in on Friday and we'll do we'll do bits and stuff like well the lads have this week we're meeting up in London, we're meeting up here, we're all on the drink, we're all on that, and 
thinking to myself, <laughs> oh, game Saturday, massive game Saturday against Oldham. So we went, right, that's it. From the Wednesday, so we all met each other on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. On the Thursday, we went, right, that's it, done. We're focusing now. We actually run Mark up and said, we want to come in Thursday. So we went in Thursday, Friday, played Oldham on the Saturday, beat them 5-0, and that was the, that was the title. And yeah. just and I want to I want to dwell on that a bit as well because again you led that team out as captain to win that title on that day and again um, from what I read you had your is it your son with you as the mascot yeah, that day that, a, so yeah, yeah. where does that rank in terms of the best days of your career yeah I'm, I'm very much up there yeah very you know the day was, it was a, again it was a full house that I'm not you know you don't see I didn't think I would see but hopefully I'd see. Full house, we had the whole stadium. Uh, my boys leading the team out with myself, um, you know, your, your family and your mates are there. It's, it's just a, it's just a, an unbelievable day. And then you get the trophy, you lift the trophy up in front of your teammates, all the fans. And then the, you, you come off the pitch, and then you, you, you know, the chairman at the time was Theo Pafitis. Um, we go up to the director's box to do the trophy again in the director's box. All the all the crowds on the pitch now. Wow. And that's one of the pictures I've got here. And it's it's just it's just an amazing, amazing day. And uh, you know, to to do that, you know, in front of you. Yeah. Like, packed out, you know, 20,000. You know, you, you can't buy them days and, and, and you just, you know, you, you look back on it and they are memories and they're good memories. And, you know, I'm always, as I said to you, I'm always welcome back now. Um, I haven't been back because I'm busy myself on a Saturday. So it's, it's very tough to, to get over there and watch games. And um, I, I do miss it. I do miss going back. And, and um, it's, it's, it's a club fond, fond memories. And, um, and again, they're in the championship and they're, they're holding their own, which is, which is great, which is great to, to be. Really yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're walking back with uh, open arms to run this. And again, yeah, yeah. It, one, one of the things I have to ask as well, because you were so close the season afterwards to getting the, um, you're making the next step from the championship to the Premier League. Like, how on earth did you settle so quickly in that league after going up to the championship? And like, how do you look back on that season? Because you were so close. It was like the game against Birmingham that unfortunately went away in the last minute. I'm not going to lie to you. Tim Cahill was the sitter and Dion yeah. Dublin was the absolute sitter. So yeah, how do you reflect yeah, yeah. on that day? Yeah, we was... Um... Yeah, the season was was really good. We 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 took our form uh, into from the from the league underneath uh, to the championship. Uh, didn't really mix with the, with the with the signings. We we brought um, we brought a couple in, not majorly, because I think we felt we we were, we were good enough to not survive but do do all right. Um, we had a tour to Germany. We went to Germany on, on tour, totally cancelled because there was inklings our fans were going to come over and cause trouble. So we didn't play a game in Germany. We were supposed to play three games in Germany, never played any. So we were behind in that. So yeah, so that was a bit of a, a nightmare. So, but we got ourselves really fit and um, the team spirit was good. Um, played Norwich the first game. We beat them 4-1. And so you're thinking, wow, you know, this is, this is all right. But we just felt anywhere we go, we, we'll go to this place, we'll go to that place. And we just think we're going to win. We're just going to win. And that's how it was. You know, we, um, we'd, go to, we'd go to Ipswich, we'd go to wherever, and just really, really turn teams over. So I got to the playoffs. Um, you play Birmingham away from home, and, and the deal gets us a goal uh, to make it 1 1 come back to the den and the atmosphere that night was really not nice you know you know I could feel it in the in the in the ground you know you went out for the warm up and uh, a lot of adults were in the in the junior section and, and uh, it just didn't, yeah it just did, didn't feel right mate did, did you get reminders of that Where, let's say from the other year 2020 final um with England and Italy is that bring back memories of sort of what happened in that day in the playoff yeah, final that I, sort of I vibe think, I think, was it just didn't yeah. have the right atmosphere, mate? And, and, and evening games under the lights at the den was really they were they were sort of um passionate electric, but it, 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 this this seemed another level, and, and yeah. you know, I think a lot of trouble in that from before the game outside. 
and, and I think it, it, it come onto the pitch really. But Steve Bruce was manager of that Birmingham side, and he put a, I can't remember the fella's name, but he put a centre half on Timmy Cahill, who was playing midfield. He just followed Timmy all the way around the pitch, <laughs> and it was a master stroke from him. Yeah, because we just couldn't get a goal. We could we had we had chances. And until this day now, I've, ne I've never seen the goal that they've scored. I've never seen it. And I don't want to see it. I'm not blame you. No, because I think we had a chance. I think I think Dion had a chance. And I think they went up the other end. They broke out. And, that, and, that, and they scored from there. And I've never seen that goal in all, in all my 20 odd years that I've, I've been away from Bill. Um, but why why do you then feel like the club weren't able I know it's a very hard ask because you came from the league one but do you reckon you ever did have a chance or feel like you had a chance to go back to the Premier League or do you reckon that defeat took something out of the team that probably never came back in the sense no, of really going right. close we, we was, we was um, ITV Digital went down oh yeah yeah um, it, was just, it was a stinker for a lot of, a lot of clubs and um the promises of contracts was 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 taken away from us all, and um, yeah, it, it was a tough. You know, I, I remember the, the following season we were we were poor and first game of the season because I used to negotiate the fee over the um, the bonus scheme, and it was we had we hadn't signed our bonus scheme for for the season because it was so bad, um, so. The Rotherham game come up and um, we ain't signed no bonus sheet. And I was like, I'm going up, up and down the stairs, up and down the stairs. And this is like at quarter past one. You've got to sign it before three o'clock. So I'm like, Lance, this is the sheet. This is, he ain't going to budge on anything. So I, all I've got in my mind, I'm not thinking about the game. I'm thinking about these bonus sheets. So I'm going up and down these corridors. Like, all sign them. So all sign them. It, 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 no one wanted to sign them, but we signed them. Just whatever. Went out and played Rotherham, lost 6-0 at home. <laughs> <laughs> because we weren't focused. We were yeah. interested in what we were, the bonus schemes and things like that. And that season was, we just didn't get going, mate. We just didn't get going. And, and uh, it was a shame. Um, yeah, we just didn't get, you know, and, and things escalate from there. And Dennis Wise takes over and, you know, the rest of this history that I don't really, really want to go into because it's just, it's a, it's a bad time, you know, and um, and um, and then you get shipped out to Wickham and uh, and them sort of days, you know, not good for me. And, and uh, but, you know, I was happy to, to go to Wickham um, with Tony Adams, you know, but I was doing, driving two hours a day and, Back and forth, back and forth. And I, I wasn't being honest to them. I signed a two-year deal and um, just didn't just didn't happen for me there. Uh, John Gorman come in, a great lad. We had Rob Lee there. Um, but it just I just I couldn't do it. I mean, it wasn't fair on the on the on the fans. So I I they they released me and and, and then everything sort of went away from there. And uh, yeah, it was it was tough, tough end. But thoroughly enjoyed it, but really tough end to my career, really. But yeah, um, yeah. you can but you come to the end, you know. Gary Neville, I'm just gonna see what he says. Your legs just go, and it's as simple as that. It's, it's tough to take, but your legs just you think you're not the player you are. Yeah, you, you, you're conning, you're conning people that are paid money to, to pay your wages and to see you play, and it's just not just not fair. Again, it's, it's just a really, really uh. I don't know, just it's just taking me pleasantly so I'm pleasantly surprised about how candid you've been about yeah. sort of that aspect of your career as well. Cause yeah. again, it takes a lot to, to do that. I don't speak a lot about the end of it. I just I don't yeah. it, it just it's it's not a good time and it, it's 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 where you've been fit all your life and suddenly it's taken away from you and it's just not a it's it's, it's very hard. It's very yeah. hard. Again, um it, it's one on ones where I was there was a point in me that wanted to mention the FA Cup 2004 final, but again, because... Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. Yeah. You know, that's, again, that's, you weren't part of it, so yeah. it's like, it, yeah. it does, yeah. Yeah, that, that's a tough, that's, you know, that's really tough to, yeah. to watch. I, 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 went, I went off to Amsterdam with my 
and uh, we watched it in a bar, and I just, I, I, I just didn't want to be around it. You know, I just, I really, just, I said to my mate, "Come, let's just go, just go." And he, he, you know, they're my mates. They was all my mates, and it just the way it ended, the way you know, I wanted it to end. It wasn't the way I wanted it to end, and then. You know, I had to go and play a pre-season friendly for Wickham against Millwall, and I wasn't the same player again. And yeah, I think yeah, I didn't get my chance to say goodbyes. You know, and I think that was something that you know I've been there since. You know, I've been on the pitch since and and, and seen the crowds and stuff like that. But I'm not. It, it, just at the time, it was just like he. I don't want to. You know, I don't want to sort of Dennis Wise, but. He sort of made a road for his own back, and he, he, I think he, he punished me for being successful at one club for that club by dragging me to Burnley away, dragging me to Preston away, and not even putting me on the subs bench. You know what I mean? And you know, at that time, I had a young family, and it just it, it, it stunk really. And yeah. um, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't want to end this in a, in a in a negative way, but it, it, it was just a bit of a tough tough finish to it. Yeah, I get where you're coming from, Twelve. But I think the one question, well, there's three questions I have to ask. Not about Mill, but just overall, right? First question is this. Do you feel like, as a pro, you squeezed every drop of talent and effort you could have done over yourself from the years that you played professional all the way up to now? Like, looking back at your career, do you reckon you gave it everything? Like, where you did and what you ended up was where you kind of felt, like, you know, that's about right. Or do you reckon you look back and you think, hmm? Could have done this differently. Could have done a bit more. Maybe would have could have given a bit more here and there. Like, how do you look back at your career as a whole? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll give everything. I, th- I think everyone would would say he, he was hard on his sleeve. He, he give everything. Probably wasn't the most talented of, of, of guys, but he he give everything and uh, just led led by example. I think I think that's all you can do in life. You know, in, in in football, in life, and in, in everyday life, you just got to lead. You just got to lead as you can. You know what I mean? It's uh, you know, there's some tough tough tasks along the way in there, and you just got to really grab hold of it and um, and make the best out of out of, out of the situation. And uh, that's how that's how you got to live. That's how you got to live. And uh, you know, I'm you know, I, I hope that people say well, he, he was a tough he was a tough guy and tough but fair and I think that's all you can all I can say really mate yeah. yeah second to last question I'm going to ask is this one um, what advice would you give to any professional football player listening to this podcast um, about what it takes or what they should expect or what they want what they should want to do to become a professional football player and follow in your footsteps one of them I'd say is 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 give it your all. Just give it your everything you can, and, and, and give it give it everything. And then, if you're at a football club and you're you're not playing games, don't be happy to sit on the bench. Go off and go and play somewhere else, like I did, and a lot of lads done in the area. Go off and play somewhere else. Just play football, and then go back to that club and go right. Now you've got the opportunity. Now I've done my bit. Now it's your turn. Am I either good enough for you or I'm not good enough for you? And that is what I would tell any young boy now who's playing the game. If you're, you're at Colchester, you're at wherever, go and find games, play games, and then you'll, I'll tell you something, you'll go back a better player than when you was. Yeah. And the final question I want to ask is this one. Um, it sounds a bit of a specific question, but I think it's the theme of the podcast, right? Is there anything, any specific advice or anything that you might even want to say from to anyone from Ilford that might be listening to this and think, you know what, um, like he, you've done what you've done and you've gone to the, to the heights that you have. Any f- specific words about sort of what Ilford, number one, has done for you in your career and number two, it's like, what would you say to anyone from Ilford? Like, it's not, it's not a spectacular part of the world. Uh, it's not a spectacular part of London, but it, it has its quirks. But what would you say to... Yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe I believe it, it, it made me as the person I was. I wasn't brought up in a village life. I was brought up in a you know Chablis, Romford, Ilford, Seven Kings in that sort of perimeter. 
it was a tough, tough life. I think you had to, you had to get on with it. You had, you had to, you probably still is now. So you, you got to get on with it. We're not all privileged, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's made me want to work hard and 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 and, and do stuff that I, I wanted to do. And and I, you know, I know, you know, I've been to Wilford. I've, I've watched, I've played against the Wilford Football Club and stuff like that as a manager. And there's always talented guys there. There's always talented boys there, but they need. They, they've got the talent, but then they need to push that talent on. And I, 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 I know there's a lot of talent in Ilford. I, I really do, because, you know, I, I do look at my old school pages and people that are on there and things like that. So I know there are a lot of talented people around there. And I think their, their experiences of living there will help them in life, as they did me. And... Um, yeah, as, as I said, you know, you've got to be a tough cookie to survive around there as well. You know, you have to be a tough, tough guy and um, you need to, to have a bit about you, but in a good way. And uh, I, th I think you get the rewards to go with it. I think everyone's striving for the same thing. Everyone gets knocked back. It's the way you recover from that knockback. And then hopefully the knockback I got from Arsenal at that sort of 15 age set me up for the rest of my, rest of my life. Wow. Again, really, really powerful to hear that. And with that, it's probably the best place to end the pod. And I have to say, I've thoroughly enjoyed having you on and blessing us with your presence. And well, of a lot of great stories, a lot of great anecdotes, a lot of great insight into the game that I might not have gotten through anywhere else, really. So again, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk to uh, talk to us on the pod, really. So thank you so much, Stuart, for giving us your time. That's good. Excellent, mate. Thank You've you. You've been a great guest, honestly. Yeah. Final question. Yeah. Is Ilford or is Redbridge, is it part of East London or Essex? Well, how, do you, how have you seen it? Um, I'm staying with Essex. Yeah, I'm staying <laughs> with Essex, yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. see myself as an Essex guy. I see myself as an East Londoner, but again, I might be uh, chancing Essex. it a bit. Is yeah, it Essex? I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That used to be my postcode. It used to be Il Chapel Heath, Ilford, Essex. So yeah. I'm going for that. Fair yeah. game, fair game. But again, this has been a chat about football podcast. Uh, this has been an episode of Stuart Nevercott. I hope you guys enjoy listening to this as well. Let us know your feedback. Let us know if you enjoy this as well. If you can, send Stuart so enough if you can find him on social media because at least a fellow with, with good reason, to be fair. But if you can find him, let him know how much you enjoy this as well. Again, like I said, you can find us on Spotify, Instagram, and, well, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Instagram and um, Twitter, ACAF underscore podcast. And on YouTube soon enough. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching the video and watching this. Yeah, watching this and watching how I've put this together. So hopefully you enjoy it. But until the next guy, until the next time, guys, take care. Enjoy yourselves and all the best. Talk to you soon. Bye.